hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another truck drivers transmitting telecommunications over tough terrain while telling tales to tiny teammates that tell them they're only going as far as Tulsa. Uncle Gary thought that the word thought stood for people who think too much, not skanky women episode of the Days Grim. My name is Brian Michael Day. My name is Thomas Grimm. We have no Drew. Right, but joining us this week in the Days Grim <laughs> studio is Pete Olson. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Well, you have to be doing great. You've I had... have to be doing the great. The world is mine. Um, every day I wake up and I'm like, I hope I'm doing as good as Pete Olson. You know what I mean? You'd be surprised how many people in the tri-state think that. <laughs> and a lot of people know you. Well, there are a lot of people know, that that know this voice. That, if you've ever heard "Ahoy, DJ B and Diane," yep, you know this voice. It's funny you say that. Now that's bringing back more See? memories. Yeah, "Ahoy." Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people do know that you exist, which is probably more people know that you exist than they know that Tom and I exist, which is pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, so make sure the next time they call you onto the radio, you mention like, "Hey, check us out." Over yeah, at- <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna know you'll be getting you'll be getting a shout out here. <laughs> uh, no, man. But so we haven't seen we haven't seen you in how long has it been? August. Um, yeah. Was it August? It was. Yeah. yeah. It was a hot minute my lo- ago. My lovely bride was a guest in August. You were not married. at We that were not point. married at the time. We um, got married in October. You did own a kill. Yep. Did at that point in time. I didn't. I think at that time. I think they were on their way. Oh, okay. They were had not been delivered yet. The spicy kilt. The kilt is the only article of clothing that can be worn by both men and women and children alike. You and have no, to free ball on that, right? I think it's no standard underwear. protocol. If you wear a traditional, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, that's a commando thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a fucking Scottish warrior thing. I, don't, I got a buddy who's, who is actually Scottish, and he's, uh, he's a seaman. It's the dancer from... Um, from uh, Oh my God! I'm I'm skipping names here. Rush Slocum's music video. The guy with gotcha. the long hair, that redhead guy. He's actually Scottish, and every time I meet him at the bar for the Army Navy game, he's a veteran as well for the Navy. Uh, he always wears a kilt and no underwear, and he just takes pride in like flashing his goods to everybody. I don't, I, he hasn't been arrested yet. Well, so. I've not flashed my goods to anyone. So <laughs> that's good. That's my, good. My wife keeps me in line. I think that's a crime. <laughs> Did you know that the um, like the the Scots, they're like the Vikings actually went like around Africa and controlled like the Ottoman Empire's uh, like shipping aspect. I, like a lot of it came from the Vikings. I did not like, know in this. That, that little area of the world's like. Really? Yeah. It changed like their whole boating. Wild. Vikings dude. are hardcore. Yeah, they really are. Be, being a Norwegian myself, Vikings are hardcore, and I, I proudly say I am a Viking hyphen American. I don't understand why they go so hard, though. Because it's so cold. They're just so miserable. They want to ruin everybody else's day. I don't know. It's brutal. I don't know. They're a brutal people, though. They are. Or they were. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if they I even... don't think there's too many of them left around. In... I think they're all in Minnesota yeah. now. So <laughs> Could be. Uh, Being a Bears fan, we don't talk about them. <laughs> Fuck the Vikings, dude. <laughs> Still equally as cold in Chicago, the Windy City. Yeah, man. Um, but no, so we haven't seen you since August, man. You got you got hitched. Uh, yep, got married. You went got on, hitched. Went on our honeymoon, went up to Maine, the coast of Maine for nice. a week. You also so cold. Got some lobster or lobster. Lobster. They twice. do lobster yeah. or do they do lobster? They don't lobster. do crab up no. there. It's just all lobster. Lobsters, the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. We had some lobster. I bet. I bet was in the in the ocean that morning. I think it was Frank Sinatra that has a quote something about along the lines of like talking about all the fine things that he owned in life, uh, and he was like, "I only eat lobster from Maine or something." And I was like, "Too shit." Not bad. It was. F- it was fine. Eating. Somebody here in town was showing me crawfish that they're finding outside their house or whatever, and they were big old crawfish, like yeah, monsters. Biggins. And I was telling them that my great grandpa used to have a fish tank, and he would take like 
lake water, pond water, and dump it in. Mm-hmm. And every time he'd see a few, he'd pick them up and put them in the fish tank till he had enough to boil to eat. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hell yeah, dude. So there's a little tip for all the people out there that find crawfish. There you go. Boil them up, dude. Suck them up. So yeah. for our listeners that might not recognize you from the radio outside of calling in to be a regular outside, the radio. Of, me, outside of my radio voice. <laughs> yeah. 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 What do I do? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a local truck driver. I oh, drive yeah. for, can I mention the name? Yeah. It's, it, it's yeah. up to you, man. I, yeah. drive, I drive for industrial transport services out of Mount Vernon, Indiana. Shit. Yeah. Poco, uh, Posey do, County. We do a lot of work for uh, Sabic okay. out there. So All right. I, I you, run back and forth a lot of times between Mount Vernon and Evansville. Hell yeah. So, Have you always delivered locally? Or was there uh, a time where you went across? There was a time when I first started driving. I worked for another company and I, I did kind of regional stuff. And then about, well, I've been with this company for almost 22 years. So I think it's pretty neat. My fiance's uncle and grandpa they deliver like rvs like so like people that snowbird from canada to florida they drive up there and tow these people's like campers or rvs across the country or boats or you know whatever and i think it's so cool that they basically get like a week vacation and somebody else's stuff for you know to go and oh they drive the rv for the people oh yeah and, what? Yeah, and but the the trick is like if you use the bathroom and stuff in it, you got to empty it out for them. So the trick is to make stops and use the bathrooms at like trucker stops and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah dude, for sure. But like it's cool because he'll be like, oh, I saw Mount Rushmore last week, and then he's like, oh, I went to the Grand Canyon, and like it's pretty cool. He's going to all the lit yeah. spots, right? But I think yeah. as a trucker, you're more on a time crunch if you deliver oh, yeah. across the country. Yeah, you're done. I've I've been by a lot of places. I have not been to a lot of places. <laughs> you got one like, of those maps yeah. of like, I feel like if you're a, like a cross country trucker or like this RV delivery people, you got to have a map of the U.S. and <laughs> yeah. color in each state. <laughs> RV you know? yeah. delivery. I'm like a stadium guy. I, I went, I was down in Dallas and I like, oh man, I'm down. I flew, they flew me down there for the week to drive, oh, yeah. to deliver, do deliveries down there. So I'm down there and I'm like, I got to stop Walmart and get some food. Okay, where's the nearest Walmart? Yeah. Pull up in Arlington, Walmart in Arlington, Texas, directly across the street from the Jerry Dome. Oh, the Cowboys man. play. So I'm like, oh, look, there's that. Yeah. You know, I've been I mean, seeing, you know, Lambo. I've seen other things. And, you know, it's just like, whew. Right by. <laughs> Take yeah. a picture. Look, there and, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fuck the Cowboys, but also that would be pretty cool to see to see their stadium. It's I, a pretty impressive stadium. They're, they're a pretty sucky team, but yeah. it's a good stadium. Yeah. Did you see, I just offended a lot of people. <laughs> there's no team in the NFL that has made it to the playoffs as consecutively as the Cowboys have and also simultaneously sucked as much as the Cowboys have. It That's is, true. It is very, very disheartening. Did you see you Kokomo versus... Is um I don't remember Kokomo versus Fishers. It's a basketball thing going on in Mm-mm. Indiana this weekend as we record. Oh, okay. And it's th- taking place in the biggest indoor basketball court that Newcastle Indiana has. Yeah, Newcastle. Saw that this morning. And yes. It, it's only standing room now. Like it, it literally, so many people are in there. It's only standing room. It's it is <laughs> large, largest high school stadium. Yeah, that's it. In use right now. There is a bigger one. And I don't remember. It's in Indiana, but it's not in use right now. But the Newcastle State Chrysler Stadium, I think, is the name of it. Pretty neat. Damn, dude. Giving the RCA Dome a run for its money. Uh, yeah, yeah, when it existed. Oh, yeah. They tore it down, huh? Yeah. Yep. Conseco Fieldhouse, I mean. Sorry. I you mean know. Lucas Oil? Lucas Oil. Do they not have Conseco Fieldhouse either? It's no. down the street. That's the old Market Square Arena. That's where the Pacers play. So they still have it. Yeah, they still have that. Yeah, it's not Conseco, called Conseco. It's Field. not Conseco anymore. It's something oh, else, dude. I'm showing some my, uh, some other company has a sponsorship on it, but it's the same building. I'm showing my age. That's yeah. all it is. I, I think it's kind of like power companies when they get so in debt, they let another one buy them out. <laughs> yeah, <but it's laughs> swap location. <laughs> hey man, here's the title. You can have it for a little bit. Right. Um. Well. No, man. But so we haven't seen you in a while. But you are. Uh. It's still fresh enough in our memories that you kind of. Remember how the show well, goes, Pete right? Yeah, actually, is bit. an avid listener. Really, I I do. I li- oh, man. listen pretty pretty often. You so. had uh, <laughs> you had Morgan Howard on, yep. uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he grew up with my kids. Yeah, Warrior so, Mojo. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah, that guy's a stud. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I go to church with his parents. Oh, no way. So, yeah. Yeah. I, as nice of a fella as he is, man, I don't know how he agreed to come on the show. I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, we're terrible people. And <laughs> he just came in smiling and giving gifts and... We were like, you know, we're going to talk about somebody dying real soon, right? And he was like, oh, I had no idea, eh? <laughs> it's like, we'll buckle up. Uh, so that being I hope said, you're not offended that I didn't bring gifts. Oh, just, no. just me. I Your am the gift. Is, no, a gift no you being here and spending time with us is exactly the gift we need. That being said, you do recall the death of the week, don't you? I do recall the death of the week. Oh, Tom. I'll spin it up. This week's death of the week, oh, buddy. We're going to get on the topic of truck driving again, Um, and here we go. Uh, Or at least I think this guy was a truck driver. I may be mistaken. Uh, I hope he is. Uh, But that being said, um, California man dies from tooth infection in Utah Hospital, Uh, and this was February 1st. First, 2017, and the source is uh, dsecret.com. Desecret? Deseret. Or Deseret. I can't read. I'm the perfect person for this job. (laughs) Um, Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take a crack at this guy's name. Died of a tooth infection while in Utah, according to multiple news reports. The 26-year-old truck driver nailed it! 26-year-old truck driver left his home in Antelope, California on January 17th, January 17th, en route to New York, um, KCRA 3 reports. He stopped in Oklahoma when he noticed his tooth hurt uh, and received some pain medication, according to KCRA 3. Uh, when he made... When he made his delivery in New York, he called his brother because the pain was too much to make uh, was too much to make the long drive home. But the pain didn't stop. According to USA Today and his brother uh, and his yeah, and his brother took him to a hospital in Park City. Moving on. Um, quote, they had him on medication. They tried everything they could. End quote. His wife, Natalia Kondryuk, told the Sacramento Bee, quote, We prayed for him that day, that night, hoping he was going to survive. Um, but God has his plan. And we had a talk with the doctors, and they told us how this all happened. Uh, more, she goes on to say, It was just... Uh, it was just not healing how it was supposed to. It was just getting worse, end quote. Doctors said that the tooth infection had spread to his lungs and blood. Medical officials provided oxygen and moved him to a bigger hospital in Salt Lake City, the Sacramento Bee reported. This is like a multi-source job here. Yeah, they talked uh, to every news organization. Everyone in the-, <laughs> in the United Nations that wrote an article on this guy. Um, <clears throat> moreover... He died Monday morning with his wife by his side. He leaves behind two daughters. Okay, that's going to get really that's sad. So sad. Uh, but is there anything? He super? met his wife when they were 14 years old at church. Um, Shout out to the it church. It is going to be hard for both their kids without a husband. More sad stuff. Long story short, he died of a tooth infection that. So, like a lot of people don't necessarily know, but like your teeth connect to like the bloodstream. So mm-hmm. like if you get an infection in there, it's m- like super quick to go into your bloodstream. Yeah. So like root canals and all that jazz, like tooth pain's not necessarily a joke. Yeah. You can't really dick around with it. Um, and, and, and they also say that like the, your mouth is the only orifice in your body that is like constantly open. It's constantly taking in bacteria. It has its own bacterium. Like it's just like it's a much more crucial part of the body than I think people give it credit for. Did, did you were you a smoker when you had your wisdom teeth taken out? I was. Yes. Did you still smoke? No. Uh-huh. I also dipped. So like to get by, I would throw a dip in. Gotcha. I would wet yeah. the gauze and still smoke, but I would put like drenched gauze in my. Why the wet gauze? Because it helps to keep the socket wet while you smoke. Ah. Uh... A dry socket's a bad. Have you had a dry socket? No, 
I did have my wisdom teeth out though, and they war- they warned about that. The straws and the suction. Yeah, and all they that said, stuff. yeah, don't suck stuff or you yeah. know, whatever. And Tom had to quit his part time job when he got his taken out. Um, I don't think but- I need to know about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's man, a conversation nothing, for another day. Nothing is off limits on the days, Grim. No, I'm joking. But also, Tom did used to be a prostitute. That being said, uh, Wild Times, man, he was a truck driver. I was correct. Um, and I don't know how the tooth infection began. What's did- crazy to me about this story is that they gave him pain medicine, but he still had to make the delivery. You know, like there was no, there was no stopping. Dude, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't stop. And you, you be see, sicker. You can be sicker than a dog. You still got a load to deliver. Right. I've been there. Well, and like so, like when I had my surgery for my boys, mm-hmm. and I I used to deliver municipal supplies, not on a truck, but like a a dually and a trailer. I had to okay. get um a chauffeur's license. It's like the cheap, yep, borderline CDL. area of like yeah. you can still deliver supplies as long as the trailer is like twenty two feet long, and yeah. you know there's certain specs. But like I had, I uh, had a tumor on my boys, got it removed, took like six months off work, went back to work, and I started experiencing pain. And I pulled into the emergency room. Yeah. And it was so quick that they sent another driver to pick up the truck from the emergency room to carry on the delivery. <laughs> oh, yeah. You oh, know? yeah. It was like, yeah. this order's got to be delivered whether you can do it or not. Yeah. yeah. It's like that scene from Rocky where they're like, if he dies, he dies. Right. You know what I mean? The Russian. Yeah, just yeah. left yeah. at the hospital, no ride home, yeah. you know? <laughs> they didn't even send flowers, I bet. No. Yeah, dude. They were like, fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, the load's got to deliver you. You know, oh, you're, if goodness. you're sick, tough, right. tough on you. Pull, pull over and hurl and get back in the truck and go on, <laughs> dude. You know, and then hats off to uh, this fella here. Um, he really was a trooper. You know, pushing through, it. trying so, to, yeah. yeah. So, and then yeah. inevitably, uh, you don't. I think the number one takeaway from all these deaths of the week that we've read so far, if it's like, if it's origin of body like listen to your body man like if something's not right you know when it's not right you know i mean at some point you gotta be like my body is telling me you know my boys hurt or my mouth hurts like get it looked at dude one weird question pete do you keep your wallet in your back pocket while you drive not usually usually i take it out if i it'll ride most of the time it'll ride in my i got a little soft side cooler uh that I carry my lunch to work in, then it goes in the big electric cooler in the truck. Right. But yeah, yeah I got to keep a lot of stuff in there, the the wallet and stuff. Yeah, it's uncomfortable when you're and it can cause back for issues. A while. It can. Yeah, that's how you get I, polio. That's why I stopped carrying a wallet. Yeah. Wow. Well, what? Yeah, did I don't. You, I don't carry a wallet. Did you say that's how you get polio? Yeah, that's how it originated, isn't it? I don't think that's a thing. I think polio is around before wallets. Oh uh, well, whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of scoliosis. Yeah, uh, tuberculosis. Yeah. Not tuberculosis. Something that no, ends tuberculosis. in Tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> That's your lungs, dude. <laughs> I'm getting close. I can not really. No. Not really. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'd like to preface. Uh, I'd like to preface with I'm not I'm a not doctor. I'm not a doctor, yeah. but I play one at home. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hon. Yeah, so, no, I get it. So, Pete, where'd you grow up? Yeah. I grew up here in Evansville. Really? Grew up on the east side. Harrison High School graduate. Okay. Class of 86. Represent. <laughs> And uh, what is their? I was gonna like shout out their the Warriors. Warriors, that's right. That's what they. At least are. it used to be, unless that's not politically correct anymore. Well, uh, that'd be wild if it wasn't. No, I think it is because the the band is still uh, the Warrior Command. So, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. So, uh, what was high school like for you? Did you play sports or anything? No, like I'm, that? I'm a band guy. Band guy. What is Warriors? Baritone. Baritone. Nice. That's, that's the, the baritone bassy. sax, right? It's a bassy thing. No, just a baritone horn, not baritone sax. Gotcha. There's a difference. Because, like, yeah, plays, sounds like a trombone, looks like a baby tuba. Gotcha. So. Okay. I don't know yeah. that I can picture that in my Brian, mind. But, right? Brian uh, played in the the wind instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, uh, yeah. I did French horn for all, right. all of fifth grade year. That's a hard one. That's a hard one, and and <laughs> the kind of the strange part of the of the brass section. <laughs> Nobody really understands them. <laughs> uh, Brian didn't understand it either. <laughs> that's why. That's why they yeah. full, they full heartedly, no hesitation, gave me this monstrosity of a horn, 
and they just gave it to me. They were like, oh, this... So the story goes is I'm in fifth grade, and they make you participate in music, and I was like, all right. right. Yeah, you got a fifth grade? Yeah, you got to do the song yeah. flute so and they the were like, thing, yeah. This is after recording. Oh, after the, after yeah, the recorder. So now we're getting okay, real yeah, instruments. Right? Yeah. And so now they're like, you get to pick, and if the instrument's not been taken, then you get your for your selection or whatever so i was like i want to play that thing that they play uh taps on in my head like because i loved war movies and stuff and i was like i want to play that instrument and then when they asked me they finally got to me they were like what do you want to play i was like i want to play the thing that they play taps on french horn and she yeah, was that's like, not what that she is. was like <laughs> all right and then she pulls out this fucking 1975 Cadillac Lincoln fucking instrument thing that's yay big. She was like, "Here you go," and I'm super dumb. That's all. That's all I have to say yeah. about that story. I thought mm-hmm. a trumpet was a French horn. I thought that was what you called it. I'm yeah. just really. I've always been dumb. So, uh, <laughs> did you you play in marching band and stuff? Yeah, like I was marching, mar- big marching band guy. Still am. Okay, nice. Still yeah. am. Yeah, matter of fact, I didn't shout out to the Mount Vernon Marching Wildcats. I drive their I drive their equipment truck every year. A lot of fun doing that. That's my alma yeah, mater. A, oh yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah, yeah, I'm that, a I am a wildcat. Yeah, and one wildcat. one cool thing too is you decorated your truck for a parade. That was actually the company truck. Uh, that was the company float in the parade for. Uh, for ITS. I thought that was yeah, really cool. Yeah, they had lights Sick. all over, LED lights all over. Oh, that was a bunch of fun. Yeah, my wife and daughter did that with me. We had a blast. Oh, yeah, dude. That's so what's up. what happened after high school? Uh, after high school, I did the, oh, you have to go to college thing. Uh, so maybe. Went, of course, you know, <laughs> so of course, you know, I went away to IU and uh, yeah, found out uh, fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. Nope, it so, is not. Yeah, so came back to Evansville, and after they decided I needed to pursue my brand of academic excellence elsewhere, mm-hmm. uh, and went to USI. I got a grad graduated from USI. Okay, I'm, would a, you, scr- I'm a screegle. What'd you go for? <laughs> uh, business administration. Okay, nice. And it's graduating with a C in that fully uh, prepares you for life in the both the retail or restaurant industries. They say D's get degrees. Yeah, and if you get a C, yep. you're you get above a, the degree. Yeah, you That's get a, right. you get a job. You basically teach a college class. So, I think yeah. at that so, point. So yeah, I did. I did uh, the restaurant management. I did shout out to Pizza Hut. Okay. Uh, did retail management. Okay. Uh, Less exciting. They both they both suck. Uh, the cool so, thing so, about some, pizza is it's a three hundred percent markup. Great business. That's true. Yep. That's true. Other than that, I don't know. But you, you kind of learned the basics, I assume, of yeah. like an actual business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so then I did some sales sales stuff, and that didn't work out so well. And I needed had a small family I needed to feed, so off to truck driving school it was. Which there's so. good money in. Yeah, oh, yeah. To, I yep. mean, getting a CDL, a CDL alone opens multiple doors, whether you want to do dump trucks, whether you want to do semis. Excuse me. Whether you want to get into other aspects of large truckloads. Oh yeah, there's a the people don't think about it, but yeah, there's you can make good money in truck driving. The 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 exam for it's no joke though. Yeah, they do not. Oh, dude, it's not. The the book was about half an inch thick. When it, this is when I took it in 2000. I think it's gotten more difficult since then because they changed all the all the requirements for the hazmat and stuff since 9/11. But when I took, yeah, the book was about yeah about half an inch thick. Three even eights. even the chauffeur's license thing, um, like you had to know like axle weight and like oh, yeah. how many axles you had, where yep. the weight limits are, and stuff like that. Like it's way more than people think of just driving a big automobile. Yep. Two things, never forget, right? Nine eleven. Even the people born after two thousand and one, they forgot. Got to tighten them up. Second thing. What is this story? I knew a truck driver that I worked with at Archer Daniels Midland a long time ago. Uh, we were both just like grain shoveling guys, like manual laborers or whatever. We would load barges and stuff. But he used to be a truck driver, and he was from Maine or New Hampshire or somewhere up there where they're all like one-third Canadian. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And he said up there, it is not uncommon that uh, they'll have dual dual trailers and if and i could be mistaken because it's been a decade or longer since i talked to this guy but i thought he said the eighty thousand pounds 
rule like that we have here did not apply up there. Is that true? It depends. The rule on that depends depends on how many axles you have. So eighty thousand pound is for a for a conventional eighteen wheeler like you'd normally see. Yeah, you get a double double like that, and you know you can have. I'm not sure what the numbers are, but yeah, he said he only drove these for the for the amount of uh, axles you have. the The weight can go up. Now but sometimes you'll see like a regular truck, and it'll have like five sets of axles underneath the regular trailer. Yeah. Well, they can haul super heavy stuff. Like you see that a lot in northern Indiana, like for the steel mills. So are there not? So the weight restriction of eighty thousand pounds is based upon eighteen wheels, or what? That's that? right. Yeah. One, two, three, four the axles. Depends on the dual axles. Yes, yeah, thirty-four thousand for a set of uh, dual axles, like on the back, the drive axles of the truck, or mm-hmm. on the. The uh, trailer, that's 34,000 pounds. Then you got 12,000 uh, for the front. Oh, okay. If my math turns Is out your, right, does, it's... Does the dual 80. trailer change the turning? Like if you got to swing even wider? Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll... I've never driven those, so... Gotcha. I don't. I couldn't say for sure, but that's that one is dev. That one in the picture there is definitely not legal in Indiana. That's got to... That's got to be... Yeah, fuck. What's a normal trailer? Fifty three foot. Fifty three. So that's a hundred plus feet, dude. Yeah, that's wild to me. Oh, there they dumped go. it that'll, down. That'll for us break here. it there down for you right there. There yep. we go. <laughs> triple trailer. Okay. Oh yeah, triple trailers. You can run. You can run across the Indiana, Indiana toll road with triple trailers. Jesus. Yep. Good. Lord it's wild. Almighty. This makes me think of that. Did you see that they invented a single track train? You know how trains run on dual tracks? There was a guy that invented a train that can run on just one of those two. It it's was a monorail, dude. They have yeah. those at Disney World. Yeah, the <laughs> monorail. And inside's two gyroscopes. And like oh, they, wow. they adjust, and then like he couldn't do certain things with it, so he had to adjust the gyroscope so that like when the train turns, the gyroscopes turn as well. Hmm. It was like a while. I watched like an hour-long documentary on it. That the other sounds day. like something you would do, you know what I mean? Right. A hundred percent. We need to maybe make sure you have a conversation with Lori relatively soon because I'm <laughs> I worried. I see her every week or I'm, every other I'm week. I'm worried for your well-being at this point. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, I'll tell but, her to say this extra special <laughs> prayer before your next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> dude. Tom so, is fucking... So we're when losing you, him, dude. When you first got into trucking, was that when you were doing the cross-country stuff? I did, well, I did, I did regional. I started, started driving for uh, Schneider. Uh, big orange trucks. You've all seen them. Mm-hmm. Uh, working out of Walmart in uh, Olney, Illinois, at the distribution center there, delivering groceries. Nice, dude. So yeah, no, nice. it wasn't. It really wasn't. So when they no, say region, nice. when they say regional, is that just like local area, like tri-state? Like, yeah, like the, the di- what would take five, a day, six state area. That, gotcha. That well, kind of thing. Why do you say not nice, dude? Walmart just it was sucks. Ter- it was terrible. Well. Grocery deliveries in general suck. Yeah, because they deliver at night. Uh, it's terrible. I had a buddy that worked for UPS. I'm not a night guy, and he would deliver from like here to uh, Louisville or St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, the town, like going from Evansville, and then you get to like downtown St. Louis, downtown Louisville, and he's like, that's where it sucked. Is like the highway was nothing, but then when you get to these small tight, tight. towns, yep. I couldn't imagine. Then that's all I do now. Going on the going, all over Evansville. I want to cover the circumference thing again, or 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 like the your orbit of travel. So like, sure. so like now, now you're tight. You're just you're running up and down probably the same roads. I do I do Evansville when I'm running local. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I I'd, I'd, I'll do some out and back stuff. I'm at home every night. Okay, my, so my I go like to Frankfort, Kentucky, Indianapolis, ew, dude. Ugh. It's not bad. No, it's joking. actually Frankfurt's not bad. not bad. Also, uh, capital of Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. It is. That being said, my question really is around like, um, so, so like, let's say you get starting from like getting a job that's like local. So you show up to work at eight. You drive all around Evansville, dispensing load, picking up loads, dropping loads in Evansville, versus regional where like you pick up a load in Evansville and you take it to Albany or you take it to Frankfurt or whatever. And then 
uh, international or not international, but national, whatever that term is called, where you go like state to state across the country. Right. What are these? Um, and I'm not asking you how much you make. That's not what I want to ask. What I want to ask is what is the pay differences in like, I mean, are you seeing like a 20% increase from local to regional and then from regional to nationwide? Are you seeing like another 20% increase or what does that even look? I don't know if I can you really I answer mean? that. It really depends on the amount of freight you got. Really? Uh, I know guys that drive nationally and stuff and they've been with companies and their company just doesn't get them any freight. So they're not... You know, they're not making anything and they end up going somewhere else. Because I, think, I uh, think if you look on screen, I think it's a lot of a gamble necessarily. Like you kind of got to manage like this guy right here. This is a $300 trip, but the fuel cost is $515. So like I unless you're that. picking up another delivery on that, you're uh -huh. at a loss for money. You're in the hole. Or like this guy up here is driving from Florida all the way to what's that? Oregon or Washington? That'd be Washington. And Seattle, Washington. It's a six hundred dollar rate for three thousand one hundred and twelve miles. So that like, guy's getting ganked for six hundred bucks what, going that far. What does the rate mean? That's that's their pay rate, for the that's delivery. That's what the that's usually on that. That's what the load will pay. Usually the, to the company, uh, the driver won't see that amount unless he's an independent driver. So unless he owns his truck, if and he owns like his that. own truck, yeah, he'll he'll that's what he'll base his. His things off of, uh, you know, the company would see that. My dispatcher would see that and say, "Okay, six hundred bucks. Uh, we're gonna pay Pete X amount under that." I, okay, I have uh, a problem with what's on screen right now. I have a problem with what's on screen right now for one reason, one reason only. I that is like back in the day in the seventeen hundreds, twenty people would die. 20, on the Oregon Trail, on the way, <laughs> right. on the way, yeah. And they're now, eating each other at Donner Pass, yeah. And now, in 2024, I'm assuming is when this is posted. Now we're saying, yeah, if you travel 3,000 plus miles, we'll give you a couple hundred bucks. What? That is not. That cannot be right. That cannot be right. That's like three days of dr of travel. That's because they can only drive like eight hours at a time, right? Uh, you can drive eleven hours a day because they have like they're getting strict with the logs and right. stuff. Oh and yeah, everything. In, as of a couple in. of years ago, everything is now uh, electronic logs. Yeah, so you, you can't hardly cheat it anymore. You used to have guys running four or five different log books, and they'd go from L.A. to New York City in three days and not sleep, uh, stuff like that. But amphetamines, right? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I, I mean, I, I'm I'm joking partially, but realistically, yeah. But you ain't like, wrong. You hear yeah. you hear a so. lot about some truckers and drug use. Like, I the, mean, it was like an inside joke for a long time about yep. like truckers and drugs and the transnational ones back in the day. I feel like you had to be because, like he was saying, you were yeah. bending over backwards, knocking out L.A. to N.Y. in two to three days. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna need some speed, dude. Yeah. And the more, the, if you're getting paid by the mile, that's how I thought know, it worked. I thought, you were, well, I thought well, it was, most truck over the road truckers get paid by the mile. So if you're making a three thousand three k trek, you're going to get paid twelve cents to the mile or something. Right, you get paid. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what the industry standard is right but now. But yeah, that's I, why that six hundred didn't you know, sound right. To it's me, at least know. it's at least fifty cents. I gotta say a mile something. So, so I don't know what it is, but so for that drive, he would make. Well, I think $1, if you $1. own the truck, it's also a higher rate. True. If you like, well, yeah, like you said, like I said, that 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 amount there, that's how much the load is paying. So okay, that's you know. He'll that, take the he'll take that home. Ugh, uh, that is sad though. That, do you do you have like a dash cam in your truck? Uh, we do have a dash cam on the truck, and uh, I have a, I have a dash cam, and I have cameras on uh, both front mirrors that record the sides. So, gotcha. I feel uh, like uh, we used to a company I used to work for worked for the basically railroad where they make these vans and they drive the railroaders back mm -hmm. or whatever. And they had like the crash cams or whatever. Cause you see instances like this guy here 
who probably fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, this dude mows through some cars. Oh yeah. Yeah, that oh. dude that dude definitely fell asleep at the wheel or or had a mechanical problem. And that's I'll give not, him the benefit that of this so, out there. That's so and and that that is dangerous. And especially when you start talking like double trailers, 120k loads. Yeah. Like oh, it's that you're not it's stopping fr- that. It's frightening. You're not stopping that. Sometimes at uh, 80 miles an hour, if you pass out, you're going through several brick that's, walls. No, that's one of my biggest biggest fears. Is that you know? Yeah, I'm gonna no, something's gonna happen. I'm not gonna be able to stop, and I'm gonna plow through four minivans well, and a bus. Because that Sorry, air brakes, man. air brakes are a weird thing in general. Air brakes are a very weird thing. Because if you if you slam on the brakes, they might just give out, and that's why, like in Tennessee, where it's real hilly, they got those runoffs for when yeah, the brakes. I have a question well, the, about the, that. The pad. Then what happens is the pads will, the brake pads will overheat, and uh, they'll just give out. So that brings up a really good question, and, and I know a little bit about truck driving. I don't know very much. I could I can drive a truck. I don't have a license, but like um, Jake braking. Explain that to me. Like, what is what? Jake breaking. What is, is an, that? Even and a, why can't you do it in the city? Uh, why you can't do it in the city is a noise thing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yep, that's yep. exactly it. Ever the sound everybody associates with the truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a Jake break. It's an engine break. It retards mm-hmm. the the compression or whatever in the engine. I'm not a, I'm not a mechanic, and I don't play one on TV. But. Uh, <laughs> It uh, it retards. He's the so much funnier than Lori. I'm sorry, I got it. Is, I'm drawing. I, the line. It's, it's exhaust breaking essentially, <laughs> it's right? A, yes, yeah, and it, it just it slows yeah. the engine down without using the the braking system. Yeah, uh, but it, yeah, when you, and it it really it's great. Yeah, uh, it's it's huge. And then like when you're going through terrain like like uh, Gatlinburg or something. Yeah, oh yeah, that's all you're using. Yeah, you're not. If anybody's ever been down through Tennessee or anything, you'll see the trucks and you'll hear them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if they, especially if they're driving a Peterbilt and they got the great big six inch dual open exhausts, yeah, you'll hear them. <laughs> Jeez Louise, dude! <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think, I think truck driving's a, a neat job. I, I like machinery. I like cars and trucks and stuff like that. So, so do you got any a- tricks to stay awake? Like we got smelling salts in the studio. When I used to drive uh, municipal supplies all the time, I was a cigarette smoker and I smoked way more than I should have yeah. to stay awake. Like. Gum is good. Uh, gum will help you stay awake. Yeah, I'm not doing that, dude. No, you don't <laughs> there, have there's to. No Let way. I'm not, I'm not doing now. whatever that is. You don't want he to. He just Hunter Biden up into his <laughs> nose. I'm not doing that. Uh, <laughs> They're rough. But, <sighs> Weightlifters. Yeah. Them. Now, crack, crack the window open. Turn the music up. A lot of different, lot of different techniques. For, but if you need to, the best thing. Pull over, take a fifteen minute nap. A little micro. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll hit the I'll hit the rest area when I'm out like going to Frankfurt or whatever. Yeah. I'm coming back, I'm tired. Man, hit the bur- hit the rest area, take a nap. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth no. your life and it sure as shit ain't worth whatever life you're about no. to smash eighty thousand pounds. No, into. if I did if I did that, I'd never I'd probably never be able to drive again. Yeah, and I so, mean, just not legally, but just mentally. Mentally, right. yeah. What got you me. into uh, calling the radio? Is it just something to stay awake? Or I no, mean, it was in, to tell you, I'm because I'm in town all the time. Uh, and shout shout out to WIKY Morning Show DJ B and Diane Ahoy, <laughs> love so, those guys. Yeah, dude. yeah. So uh, yeah, I got calling in there for uh, traffic reports. Just because they had, they're the only station in town that I know of that does traffic. But uh, just call in and say, "Hey, there's a wreck on you know whatever street, and hey, watch out for it. It's going to you might want to go a different way, right. you know, whatever. You know, the lights at such and such aren't working. You know, find a different. Just trying to help people out. Do you yeah. win a bunch of radio contests? I have won some. I don't win a whole lot. Is it rigged? Do they know when Pete puts in? They're like, oh, they know when I'm trying. They, they know when I'm nod. trying to win. They know. They know my <laughs> voice. They're going, nope, wrong answer, Pete. <laughs> All right, dude. Do you play the wiki word? I play the wiki word. I have not won the wiki word. 
I need to win the wiki That's word. Although saying. they joke that because I call in all the time that I'm not eligible. Ah, <laughs> DJ B, come on. Yeah, but I, I would man. like to win the wiki word. I know, man. It's so crazy. It's like crazy that like after three or four months of it building, you could just like put your little word in. And then you can win twelve hundred bucks. That's like, right for nothing. That's right for literally nothing. And somebody wins all the time. So you listen to a lot of radio podcasts. Listen to radio. Do, listen to podcasts. I listen do, like, to you guys. Audio books or anything like that. I have around? done audio books in the past, uh, and have done have a, had a lot of luck with that. Is, is fiction your type, or do you like nonfiction? Fiction, fiction is my thing. My thing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big reader, anyways. So you were a big reader so, before audiobooks. I was a big reader before. Yes, I went I gotta, to school. I got a good. Uh, that's important. <laughs> stay in, stay that's in school, kids. Stay yeah. in school. Learn yeah. how to read. Don't do school. <laughs> stay on drugs. No, whatever. I forget how the slogan goes. No, but I like to make this point because Tom likes to brag about all the books that he's read. They're all audiobooks. He, I don't claim to read them. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I think that's cool. Like, there's something about like a tangible book. If you had to choose for the rest of your life, you can only read books one way. Would it be audio or would it be tangible book in hand? What do you think? If you Am had I to confined choose? to a certain number of books, no, 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 no you no, could no, be but, like Cat no, Williams and read thirty books a week. <laughs> you have to yeah. either listen to some stranger with a horrible accent read them to you, or. You can have the book in your hand for the rest of your life. It has to be one or the other. What do you yeah, think? It's a it's a cop out, but I go fifty fifty. I go either way on that. Really? Yeah. See, I don't. I'm, I don't mind. I don't have to have the paper in my hand. The, the thing, although I, it is it is nice. The thing I love so much about a, a, a book in my hand is that, like, if I'm in delved in a topic or whatever it is I'm reading about, soon to be happy Odyssey. It gets delivered relatively like in the next couple of weeks. But like when I'm in delved in something and if I bought it and it's my book and I own it, I'm going to, I can make little scribbles in the margin like, hey, don't forget this. Or, oh, I didn't understand that. So I'll research something real quick and then I'll make a quick little doodle yeah. like, oh, that's what this is about. Right. So next time I read it or if I give it to somebody, whatever. But that's the cool part about don't... like a physical book is like you can yeah. mark it up. And like the nice part is, this is like if it's a, uh... A book that makes you think or whatever. Like, when mm -hmm. you let somebody borrow the book, they already have, like, your footnotes on the book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I like to listen to the book, and if I like the book, I'll buy the physical copy. Mm -hmm. Like, if I got value from it. I get you. I get non you. Nonfiction, the, the physical book is a lot better for that very reason. Yeah. You can highlight it. You can make notes in it. You're going to... Fiction books, you don't really do that a whole lot on. Yeah. Like, uh, no, like not I really. don't. But, but like uh, Tom O'Neill's Chaos, I don't know if you're familiar. It's about uh, Char Charles Manson in the 60s and the CIA and MK Ultra, Chaos, COINTELPRO, all that stuff. It was a, such a thick read that I had to like make notes, right. sticky notes and like yep. scribbles in the margins and stuff like that. I, I can't um, wait to get the hand-me-down of this book. I'm going to be making notes in this book for sure. So when I do give it to you, Tom, you will have notes in it. But this guy right here, we've talked about him for the last three weeks on the show. But like, he was wounded eight <laughs> times during the war. And they're talking about three or four different wars. This guy is insane. He's insane. And, he, and then he wasn't going to write a book. He was like near his deathbed. Um, Adrian Carton Day Wart. And he was knighted by the queen. Um, but like he's just a stud and he wasn't going to write about his time in the wars and stuff. The Boer War, the First World War and the Second World War. But his family, they were like, your story is so captivating and you should have died a long time ago. You need to tell your story. And he was like, hmm, OK. So then he wrote his own biography, like his autobiography. With one hand. With with one hand and one yeah. eye. He's he's a freaking stud. Yeah. Not to offend anybody, but that guy sounds like a certifiable badass. Yeah, he's a he's a stud. He's a stud. Yeah. Do you want to just so he knows, like run him yeah, through it so again? He served in the three wars: um, the Boer War, the First War, the Second War. He was shot in the face, head, stomach. God bless you. Ankle, you. leg, hip, and ear. He was blinded in the left eye. Survived two plane crashes and tunneled out of a prisoner of war camp tore off his own fingers when a doctor decided to decline amputating them and described his experiences in the first war, he wrote, frankly, I enjoyed the war. 
Wow. Son of a bitch. <laughs> he enjoyed the First World War. Frank, <laughs> yeah, frankly. Frankly. Well, I frankly, enjoyed the war. I enjoyed the First World War. Yeah, one of the, one of the it comments. It was a lot of fun. One of the comments of the book, somebody <laughs> reviewed it and said, frankly, I enjoyed this book. Like, I could not. Four, four stars would recommend. <laughs> I could not buy that book. And the name of the book killed me when I found out. Yeah, Happy Odyssey. Happy Odyssey. Hmm. I mean, you can't not buy this book. I, and I highly suggest if you're into autobiographies, I haven't even read it yet, but this guy is so captivating. I know this is going to be a good book. He fought with Winston Churchill in World War One, like alongside okay. him. Yeah, like they were in the same company. Like, I mean, he, his story is just, is, I cannot wait. They don't make them like that anymore. No, no, no. Uh, but that being said, that's awesome that you're a reader, man. I feel I feel like that if you, if you can um, sit down and like take in all this knowledge and information from books, whether it be fiction, nonfiction, uh, even, you know, what did, what you read a school book the other, a textbook, whatever. Yeah. Before Napoleon's movie came out, I read a textbook on Napoleon. Yeah. Well, he, listen to a textbook on Napoleon. Yeah. It was like a 500 page textbook, but it's a 36 right. hour long audio book. I, I, I think that there's a lot of knowledge in books and not enough people like get into it. Like, like I used to not. And it's it's yeah. it's a good habit to make. Well, it's to also have. a crazy thing to think about with the way the world's going and everything's becoming digital. Is what happens when that digital is no longer there? How many tangible things there will be? Yeah, that's terrifying to think about. Right. Shout out to uh, the coin and comic book collector that we just had on, um, Brendan Shell. Yeah, Mr. Shell. Right. Uh, we were talking about like when currency goes away, what are we going to do with it? And he was like, well, I'm going to melt down all these coins. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Because apparently like coins are a big deal and people are melting them down and making money off the metal. It's, it's pretty gnarly stuff. Uh, certain, certain segments of the population are stockpiling silver and things is. like that. I get to, I, I see it all the time. Yeah. So, uh, how do national boycotts of certain places or loads affect the local regional area? Uh, I'm not sure I really know, but I know, you know, things like, you know, when the Suez Canal got blocked by that yeah. evergreen uh, and all the, and all the stuff that's going on with the, the Houthis and the, you know, the Red Sea and, you know, yeah. fire and missiles at ships and that's everything being delayed kind of co- Backs everything up. Does it put like a uh, like a more of a load on truck drivers? Like you guys got to pick uh, up their slack. It does once the once the uh, once the freight starts coming back in. Like for instance, COVID when everything was shut down, I never missed a day of work except for when you know I was exposed to somebody that tested positive and I had to take the day off or take five days off or whatever. But anyways, when freight started coming back. After that, man, we were busy. Yeah, like eighty hour a week busy. But you can only work so many hours a week. Oh, the hours government hours. says right. you yeah. can only work so many hours a week. Driving. Yep. yep. Drive eleven hours in a fourteen hour day, seventy hour work week. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, so. seventy hours in six days. That is wild, and you can't work the seventh day. Right. You have to after the seventy hours. You have to take thirty six hours off. Really? Yeah. Damn, I know some production workers that would yep. fucking love to have that. <laughs> yeah, the government the government regulations are are excessive. No, so. and that, I think that's and for just cause like we were talking about, man. You Oh yeah. You're Yeah, they're in your head, you're 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 towing 80,000 pounds to its destination. Um in the world of physics, you're an 80,000 pound missile that is heading towards the next thing. Going 70 miles an hour. 80 miles yeah. an hour. Yeah. And if you fall asleep, that missile is colliding. It just keeps going. It's not going to stop just because you say, fell asleep. They say driving tired is just as bad, if not worse, than driving drunk. It is. I Absolutely. Have, I can attest to that. I used to. Uh, so when I was in the military, I was stationed in El Paso, Texas. Kind of a shithole. Uh, <laughs> but it's a. Tw- <laughs> Shout out to El Paso. <laughs> Kind of a shithole. Uh, not, no, no shout out to them. Uh, no, but uh, to drive from El Paso, and you could Google me to be, to, if you wanted to be absolutely certain, but I think the most efficient, shortest route is roughly 20 hours, 22 hours. 
and I used to make that in one stint. I would just load up on nicotine and oh, monsters yeah. and just yep. straight through the night, 20 hours in my little Mustang five speed. Um, and what did we find? This in is here? to Indianapolis. So subtract two hours. So About 20, 20 hours. Yeah. yeah. And that's going through New Mexico. I would shoot straight I 10 all the way through Texas and then north through Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, mm, all yeah. that stuff and come home that way. So I was probably losing time. But that being said, there were times, because I'm stone cold sober, I'm not making that drive while I'm drinking, but I would be stone cold sober, and once you get to Missouri, you're 18 hours in, you're like, you feel drunk. You oh, yeah. feel drunk yes. when you get that tired. Most definitely. Sitting in the same spot, looking at the same white lines, but you feel drunk. Like, well, that's why in- some of the times they don't do just straight roads is to kind of keep your brain from going Active. in that auto mode of like just a long straight stretch. It's scary, dude. It's it's something you have to build up to. You have to get your your footing or whatever. Yeah, you have to get your your body used to yeah, doing that. I mean, I can I can get in a get in a truck, drive straight to Chicago and not stop. Yeah. Four five and a half, four, five and five a half hours. Yeah. Five and a half hours, remarkably, from the truck stops north of Evansville all the way to the north northwest Sh- side of Chicago Chirac. in a truck. You ever? Let's. I want to have a fun segment real quick. We fun, haven't been fun. having fun up until now. Oh, I've been having fun this whole time. Uh, no, but uh, speaking of Chi Town, uh, the Windy City, Chirac, it has many nicknames. No one in the country drives as horrible as they do in Chicago. Um, but that being said, like when I was up there, I saw like civilians, like regular cars, like mounting sidewalks and stuff. Like they're just, they don't care in Chicago. I don't know what it is. If it's the violence because cops don't want to stop people. I don't know what it is, but people just be doing whatever the hell they want in their cars. And it's just like the wild west. Um, but you know, outside of Chicago, what are some of the craziest things you've ever seen driving like another driver do another trucker do i mean have you ever seen something just like holy hell like what you know what i mean i saw actually this is this is actually in chicago went around the went around i was on the dan ryan expressway (laughs) i was on the dan ryan expressway and i pass oh look there's a set of duels off a trailer sitting over there and i get about half a mile down the road there sits a truck no back no back tires on the on the trailer. Uh, <laughs> one of the craziest things I ever saw when I was, this is actually when I was working in Owensboro, coming back from on uh, 62, uh, coming across by there by Rio and, and oh, all yeah. that area there. Uh, our guy went straight into the ditch, straight out of the ditch, made a right turn and kept going. Keep big, it moving. big ditch. It's a 10 foot ditch. Keep it, keep it moving, chief. Yep. Was it a, tri- a driver? No, it was it was a it was a, a car. Oh, he's drinking. Yeah. He's drinking for sure. Probably, yeah. I think he probably knew it was there. He knew he could go down and come back up. Oh, turn, th- <laughs> make a right turn on the farm road and keep going. Yeah, just felt like, it was crazy. Just felt like Duke's a hazard in yeah, it for a second. Right? <laughs> so, no, no way am I going up there and stopping and then making a turn. <laughs> Screw that. I'm gonna keep going. Speaking of weird shit you've seen on the road, man, have you ever? We're gonna take a weird turn now. You ever seen a UFO, dude? I've never seen a UFO. I saw the northern. That sounded lights. scripted, dude. I that sounded northern, scripted, dude. I saw the northern <laughs> lights once in northern Indiana, though. Really, really. Yeah. That's gnarly, dude. Yeah, that's not. But you, you did used to do a lot of nighttime driving, right? And you never saw I anything did. weird in the sky, like as you're going, no, and, like lights no. or anything like that. No. All right, man. I'm, so I'm not really watching the sky. I'm watching the watching the I'm road, watching man. The road. That's the no, right never answer. seen, never seen anything, <laughs> anything crazy like that. Damn. Okay. All right. Real bummer. I was hoping for a UFO story. Right. No, no UFOs. Sorry. <laughs> you were saying I'm gonna take a quick pee break. Okay. Damn, Time out. Me. Quick to. Dude, if you would have pissed, that'd be you know, so truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been the, you got to get the wide neck ones yeah. though. Yeah, you got to get the Gatorade bottle <laughs> that you don't even have to worry about aiming. You just... So we mentioned, as you said, as I was walking out of the room doing it old truck fashion. You know, my grandpa keeps a pee bottle in his door, and he's not even a truck driver. And I remember doing long drives. He's ready. Yeah, but like, be prepared. 
<laughs> but like, I feel like not making stops on the long deliveries uh, is kind of like a big thing, you dude, know. When you're getting paid by the mile, the less you have the doors open on the truck, the better. As long as you're moving, if you if I pull off the road to go into a truck stop, find a place to park, which is usually about a quarter of a mile yeah. from the actual truck stop by the time I walk past all the other trucks. So go in, do my thing, go all the way back out, and uh, you just knock 25 minutes off. Oh, right. easy. Probably 25 minutes just finding the place to park and then get rest, inside rest the Rest areas are much better. Yeah. If you can pull in a, if you can get in a rest area, you can get in and out in in a short period of time. But sometimes like, you don't have a choice. I feel like some rest areas nowadays, like I just feel like they're not as common as what they seemed like when I was a kid. Anyways, I don't see as many of them. I feel like right. I don't know. Is that true or is uh, that false? Well, maybe I'm just thinking about it less. I think you're thinking about it less. I think they're as common. They are. As they were. Okay. I mean, Indiana's got some. They're like the one. Uh, North of uh, New Harmony, mm-hmm. it's closed down because they're redoing it. It's all okay. just a dirt patch now, but they're rebuilding it. Okay, but yeah. uh, concentration to start the stream a little difficult when driving. Oh, while you're driving, yeah, yeah. yeah no, you don't do it. no, don't do it while you're driving. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, hit, you, gotta right hit the, you gotta hit the, you gotta hit the off, you gotta hit the off. <laughs> The off ramp, and God. then you know you can. I was doing do it wrong all I, those years of driving. I you can, can do I, the yeah. No, that's the, no, that's distra- <laughs> that's distracted driving, dude. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> you can't do that. Tom making a trip to Florida with the family, and he just whips his out and at eighty miles an hour is trying to get it in a damn well, red bull you get in the, the general area, and then you got to focus for a little bit. You know. Yeah. No, don't do that, man. Yeah, hint distracted to, hint to all the listeners, don't do that. <laughs> You're going to be the death of the week, and I will continue the show on in your honor yep. when you crash and die during a pee extravagant. Yeah, when you do that driving. death of the week, call me in. I'll, I'll, be happy to come, I'll be happy to come in and sit in for that I one. Told, I told him not to. <laughs> told him not to. I told That's him right. fuck. I told him not to. That'd be a wild <laughs> death, like piss all over everywhere, yep. you know? Yep. This car crash so. smells a lot like ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I found some smelling salts. That's probably yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. That's what it was. Is that don't don't ruin it now. Why wheel wheel while wheel peeing? Has anyone died while peeing? Car passenger dies. This is along the side of the highway, but that's brutal. Uh let's but Yeah, no, you can't do it on the side of the highway. You gotta get it on that off ramp. Go ahead and dog ear that one, Tom. Text me gotcha. that link, and we're going to go ahead and uh, save that for another time. Yeah. Um, but that being said, man, uh, you see some wild stuff on the road, though. And that's one thing I for sure wanted to ask you about was, like, just, like, what's the craziest shit you ever seen on the road? And, and the, <laughs> the Dukes of Hazard one got me good. But I'm serious. When I went to Chicago, the, the weirdest thing I ever saw was people driving a... On, I'm going down. It was a the highway that goes into the heart of Chicago, and it's named after a guy. I don't remember what it's called, but going north. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, let's see the uh, on the Indiana side. Dan, on the Indiana side, mm-hmm. going into the heart of Chicago. Going into the heart of yeah, you go through the Bishop Ford, mm-hmm. then you hit the Dan Ryan. Dan Ryan is what it was. Yeah, so I'm that driving. Goes, down. That goes all Dan Ryan goes all the way into into downtown, then switches to the. Uh, you can go like a hundred different Kennedy. ways. Yeah. But uh, I'm on Dan Ryan and I'm, I'm just trooping along and we see a stoppage up ahead and we're like, of course, you know, we're like 10 miles out from Chicago. I was like, yep. All right, here it comes. We're here. And I would see people coming on as we're parked on this fucking Dan Ryan highway. And there's an on ramp to my right and people are like waiting to get on. And then eventually these line of like six cars waiting to get on the Dan Ryan, like the very last one, just like pulls into the grass and I to the left towards us and I'm like oh he's just gonna come on over now and then he starts backing up well then he just starts driving the wrong way down the on ramp and then the other yep. five cars follow him they just yep. and they don't Been there. saw a dude mount the curb 
downtown by Wrigley Field. They don't it? give a shit. They just nope. like, almost watch a lady die in a crosswalk. What's she the cra- got hit by the car. What's the like, craziest thing you've ever done while driving? Craziest thing I've done while driving? Like you ever switch seats with your passenger while driving? Set no. the car on cruise and hop on over? No. Gotcha. I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are not the person to talk to mm. if I'm 16 years old and getting my license. <laughs> if you see Thomas going down the road, just stop and pull over. Let him go. I'll hold the wheel for you. You're I've not going to switch me seats? I've done that. I've steered from the passenger oh, yeah. seat. Yeah, you've Everyone. never switched seats with the driver. The driver's like, I'm done, but not stopping. I've done a Chinese fire drill. No, that's not yeah, as cool. No. Um, no. I... Short of like, and we don't need to get into like sexual acts and stuff, but I'm just saying, I've never done anything like crazy while driving. No. Yeah. Gotcha. Never, never done anything. Life. Yeah. I'm trying to stay alive. That's the key. Yeah. Tom. That is. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, as I got older, I was like, wow, those were crazy times. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of things there that are not consistent with, uh, with life. Yeah. Darwinism <laughs> really didn't take its toll with me. God, dude. Um, one other thing I for sure wanted to bring up was uh, C- CB radios. I've been fascinated with them forever. Um, sure, go ahead, good buddy. Yeah, so go go ahead, rubber duck. <laughs> oh, by the way, don't don't call people a good buddy. A Why? good buddy means something completely different than what you think it means. What does it mean? That's uh look yeah, up, that's pull up trucker slang. Trucker <laughs> radio slang. Fellow operator often uses a form good buddy. The operator Why is this wiggling around so stop know. doing what you're doing? It, it has a little something to do with dudes like another dudes. Oh, God. they're going tip to tip. Yeah. Kind of like a Spartan yeah, situation. Yeah, you know, a good buddy. Yeah. yeah. 10-4. And also another thing that I found out today while I was researching the death of the week, there's a multitude of different tens. So 10-4 is just like, okay, that's o- That's okay. Roger that, that literally is okay. Yeah. 10-4 yes. is like, okay. Yeah. But there's like a 10-5 and a 10-6 and a 10-10. Yes, there is. And all it, these... goes, it goes way back and it's... Uh... How much of this are you familiar with? Do you know all of the trucker slang? Uh, Do you know a lot of it? I used to know more. I usually don't even use my CB because anymore there's just a lot of idiots on there just yammering. rambling on and yammering. Yam- yammering just to hear themselves talk. And it's... Uh... Back it down. I also found yeah, there out... there back door. Back door. That's that's back. That's like checking your six. Okay, your back door. Yeah. So one thing we talked about, they called the the tow truck or the trucks that 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 tow cars like for car lots and stuff. They call them parking. That's lots. a parking lot. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. No. So what a, are what are some yeah, other? You haven't seen the movie Convoy, have you? No, sir. No. No. Chris 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 Christopherson. You need you to check, heard that, the song. check that. I know out. his music. Yeah. You know you know the song Convoy. Uh, no, it's from the movie. But if I had you, heard you it, need, you got some homework to do there. Okay, the, the right. song is so. good. Can I get the salts while you read this back row? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was about to yeah. throw you my beer. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, so back row. Here is uh, Tom's favorite uh, trucker slang of the day. Back row. Yeah, the last rows of parking in a truck stop, often a hangout for prostitutes. See lot lizards. Uh, oh yeah, uh, lot lizards was yeah. funny. I e lot lizard lizard lot lot lizard. Lot yeah. lizards I, I, I like this. Term. Stay away from the lot lizards. My grandpa, when we drive bear bait, well, bear. Yeah, yeah, but he'd always call it his rabbit when somebody would come flying past him at a high speed. That's right. That's the rabbit That's for the, the police rabbit. officer to get. So you'd let him get a little bit ahead, and then you could go ahead and kick it up a few miles an hour. It comes from dog racing. Really? Yeah. Oh no shit. Yeah, greyhound racing. They'd send a rabbit out in the the. The oh dogs yeah, I have it. seen yeah. that. I have yeah. seen that. Let me let me hit them salts. Big. I dog. learned I learned that from uh, cartoons. Um, no, but what are some of your favorite favorite terms? Once you learned what they meant, that you oh, like tried well, to, that you like purposely tried to use. You know what I mean? Well, you got to usually like you t- you mentioned a parking lot. Well, there's you know you got flatbeds, which are you know skateboards. Uh, you got covered wagons that you know basically have a canvas. Top, Soft kinda, sides, yeah, kind of kind of stogo looking thing. Uh, a lot of a lot of things like that. I don't I don't use a lot of them because I'm I stay off the CB. But when I'm talking to my buddies on the on the phone, I think the phone is taking over a lot of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to my buddies on the phone. Do you uh? So do you guys get in trouble for talking on your phones? It's like gotta be hands free. 
It has to be. It does. The state law is has to be hands free. So. Even when you're going through a wait station, yep. I went on a delivery one That's a time. It's a chicken coop. They did Just not. So you know. Gotcha. That's what they call it's it. Chicken coop. Yeah. They didn't give me the address to the place. There I it is, was right going. there. Chicken coop. Chicken coop, a way station, often called just a coop. Yep. <laughs> they didn't give me the address of where I was going, and I had to call the place. So I'm going through a wait station, 10 miles an hour through yeah. the wait station, pull out the phone, ring it up. I get the light to get pulled over, and I got a ticket for being on my phone while I'm... Yep. Yep. No, that's bad. <laughs> being on the phone is bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, we can use it. I got the big big truck driver headset. You see it. It's got... Uh, Got the big earpiece and a microphone, you know, goes over one ear. Uh, those are great. Uh, but yeah, you can't be on the, you can't be on your handset. Now, my son is an my son is an over the road truck driver, and uh, he can't be on his phone. His company won't allow them to be on the phone at all. Really, not yeah. even like using Nothing. hands. Nope. Wow. Nope. Let's play. Can we play a little game real quick in these last few minutes? I'm a having cracker head. <laughs> hold on. I'm having fun with these nicknames and these call signs. Tom, Tom, do me a favor. Drag this off of the monitor. Take this down off of this screen and pull it over to only where you can see it. And what I want to do now is I want to have Tom just read more over. It's still on my screen. I'm working on it. All right. Um, I want to have Tom read a couple couple nicknames. couple nicknames. And scroll through. Don't go in alphabetical. <laughs> Just get a couple good ones that you like. See if Tom. I can get them or see if you can get them. No, or I want to see. Who gets it first? <laughs> or that's even more fun. Let's let me guess first. Okay. And then he guesses. And then let's see let's see if either one of us is right. So just scroll up and down through the list. Pick us a good one, Tom. What do you what do you, what's here here is uh today's trucker slang uh, quiz where uh, Pete and I are going to go head to head and see who gets the the trucker slang correct. I'm going to so, be embarrassed Tom? if you beat me. <laughs> okay, all right, Tom, we're waiting on you. First one is Deadhead. Deadhead, and and since you're privy, I get to go first. I hate to do that yep. to you. No, you go Deadhead. Ahead. Um, I think to me that could only mean a couple of things. I think to me that means that it's uh. That it's a deadhead. It's dead, dead. I'm thinking um, Tombstone. I'm thinking uh, the thing that drives dead people around. What do you call that? A paddy wagon? No, a not hearse. the paddy. A hearse. I'm thinking hearse. All right, now what's your guess? Deadhead is when you're pulling an empty wagon around. Yep. Fuck. Not even close. When you're, when you're coming back from somewhere empty. So you just dropped your load off, and, yeah. and you're cruising around at twenty yeah. thousand or fifteen thousand. I do, I do that a lot. I'll go, I'll go out and back, and I'll, I'll take a load out, and I'll meet a guy, and yeah. we'll swap loads, swap trailers, and yeah. I'll come back with his empty. Swapping I'm dead, loads is dead a wild term. Back. Yeah, not really digging the terminology of of truck driving so far. But back to the turn. Give me, give me another one. What a dragon wagon. Dragon wagon. Ooh, dragon wagon. I like that. I like that for like. Like that for just a car driving fast, just a regular ass, like a Honda Civic driving stupid fast, almost like the rabbit, but dragon wagon. What do you got? I used to know what that was. Uh, Is it a hot rod? Do I win this one? No, it's a tow truck. Oh, yeah. Dragon. D-R-A-G-G-I-N. Dragon wagon. Son of a bitch. Dragon wagon. Damn it. All right. That that one doesn't get used a lot in my world. All right. Give me another. Gear jammer. Gear jammer. Gear jammer. I'm thinking uh, gear jammer. All all I can all I'm thinking is an a, like a novice novice uh someone who's bad at driving a stick, someone that doesn't like a gear jammer. Yeah, I'm th- I'm thinking like someone that doesn't know how to drive a stick. What do you got? That's somebody that's just they're just hitting it and getting in there. They're just jamming gears. It's a it's a driver who speeds up and slows down with great frequency. All right, you're the judge here. So. I mean, I think you both kind of got that one. All right, so tiebreaker. Well, no, it's not really a tiebreaker. Uh, all right, well, we're we're good with this, damn. I, but I'm I feel like I feel like the terminology is just wild. Where do you think that it's comes from? It's got its entire own vocabulary. I know. Where does that come from? Where does it even start? You know what I mean? Yeah, I even... think it was just bored dudes on the radio. Wild. They just came up with stuff. You know, <laughs> you see that, you know, just one guy starts calling, you know, one guy starts calling the rest area pickle park. 
<laughs> Next thing you know, everybody's calling it a pickle park. I wonder if there's like a Bible somewhere, like a like a truck driver's Bible or like is. almanac. I bet there is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, English to truck driver, yeah. truck driver to English dictionary. Yeah, go ahead and bring it on back. <laughs> bring it on back, good buddy. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I, we are good buddies. That is a fact. I yep. did like um, um, Dragon Wagon. I can't believe I didn't get Dragon Wagon. God, I was so close. There was some good ones. Four-letter word. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. That's, also, that's also called the little word. Uh, if, the way, if the way station is open, yeah, four-letter word or the, or the little word is out. <laughs> As opposed to closed, which is the big word. Oh my god! You like to see, you like to see the closed word. I like the general mess of crap. A GMC truck, nice. Probably pretty close. Yeah, pretty pretty close. Um, I thought uh, the comic was funny too. You know what a comic is? Or comedian? A comedian? The comic? The oh, comic yeah. book is the log. I saw that one earlier. That's his no, log. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the comic book. But there was one in here that said comedian. Comedian. Yep. Hey, you don't want to cross the. What's the comedian? It's just the median. Comedian is the median. <laughs> ah, you know, the grassy strip. Yeah, nice. yeah. You just drove straight across the comedian. Uh, male buffalo. <laughs> Why you gotta say male buffalo? Why can't it just be buffalo? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Anyways, so um, motion one- lotion <laughs> means diesel fuel. Motion. Yep. So we were talking about a little bit about like general mess of crap and different trucks. You're a Ford guy, right? I'm a Dodge guy. You're I'm a, Dodge a Mopar guy? dude. You're a Mopar dude. Yeah. Okay. So Big what? Time. What? Tr- what? If you had to buy your own, do you, you don't own your own tractor? Oh, truck, not my you? my my work truck is a Freightliner. Okay. I'm a, but I, otherwise I'm a Dodge guy. So what is Dodge in the tr- uh, tractor truck world? Like, do they uh, have? They don't really. They don't make anything. Yeah, they do. They make a. Uh, they used to. Um, they make bi- they make medium duty trucks and heavy duty trucks, but, but not semis. There's a there's a semi company affiliated with Dodge. Isn't Freightliner it? used to be owned by Daimler Chrysler, which owned Dodge. Yeah, at the same time. So okay, that would maybe be, that's what I'm thinking. The, that ge- would be the tiny tie, tie in there. The gearing on these trucks are wild. Twenty gears or something, right? It's not not uncommon for a guy to have, like an over the road guy to have an eighteen speed. Yeah, yeah, that's but wild. Isn't yeah, it not like it's not like uh, like if you're looking at a manual, you know, you think one, two, three, four, five, six, reverse. It's not. There's like a weird pattern to it, right? Where you can go like, up and then like back. most of ours, the ones we have are are pretty. They're pretty standard. Let's knock that over. Ooh, that would have been bad. Party foul. Yeah. No, you're but, good. Uh, yeah, no, we we'd have ten speeds, and they it'd be. Five regular, then flipped up with the divider, run them back through five again. Really? Yeah. So there's I've like I've got an automatic now. Though I like it a lot. A lot of oh, guys so don't not, like automatic you're not semis shifting at all. I don't shift crap, man. Really? No, it's it's awesome. Yep, there it is, right there. Yeah. That's no it. shit. Yep. Run through the five speeds, flip the range selector up, then run through them again. And God, then, can you from five to six all the way back across? And that's that's simple, just a simple age pattern. Based, uh, yeah, based off of what they used to be back in the '60s, they'd have a splitter and a dual range rear end, and it, you'd have three levers you're trying to move all the same time while trying to drive. <laughs> I've seen picture pictures of it in video. Yeah, like that. There, my god, <laughs> my god, I couldn't imagine. Could you imagine yeah, no. downshifting from like twenty to seventeen? Yeah, no, that's that's craziness right there. I'm having flashbacks of the shining, dude. This is a yeah. fucking maze. <laughs> like, oh my god. That's wild. <laughs> no, but uh I've always been a uh like working in ADM and then like my family farms a little bit. I've always been a back to the brands and stuff. Big international fan. International. Big, big I started Ford, out driving an international Ford cab and international. over. Yeah, dude, yeah. cab overs Sweet. are wild too. If they don't lock them in place, have you seen any of those? Like, dude, that was that terrified me when I was driving a cab over. I'm like, I'm gonna stop, and this thing's gonna flip up. Oh, have you seen those? No. So basically, it's... the cabs over the motor, 
Yeah. And so like say yeah. you're getting the motor worked on and they don't walk the cab down. If you hit the brakes, that cab goes up and you're facing the road. Like it can. It's it's yeah. on hydraulics, but yeah. It yeah, it's it's terrifying. That terrifying. Is not a good time. Uh, I don't um, even know what you would call it to look yeah, up pull an over image. right there. Cab over semi. See if they see if they show a picture on it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, these these flat no yeah, yeah it just t- yeah, it just tips tips up on the on front hinges. Yeah. That's wild. Tipped. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what it would look like. Yeah, God. that's so they can get into the engine and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a hassle when you're living in that thing and you you take it in to get it get it worked on and you've got, you know, your cooler and all kinds of stuff in there. You've got to secure it's it all dicey. and put it put it all in such a way that it can be tilted like that. That is <laughs> dicey. Did you ever have experience with like the live-in tractor trailers like where they had like the where they would have like a bed and like Oh yeah, t- I've t- got a bed in mine now. You do? Yeah. So yeah, like- I drive a reg- I drive a regular regular truck with this with a sleeper berth and Okay, sweet. The whole thing. I even got I got sheets on it and everything like a like a regular human being. That's nice. Well, the trucks I'm used to being in like on the farm, they're just like They're just day cabs. Yeah, they're yeah. just I don't know what you call that, but It's yeah. a day cab. Yeah, it's just two yeah, just seats. Just just two seats, yep. Two seats and a wheel and just yep. hopes and dreams yeah, and a no, bunch I've of grain. A, I've got a regular I've got a regular truck that I drive. It's got a sleeper. Oh, nice. On it. What what the advice would you give to somebody that like wants to get into getting their CDLs and trucking? Yeah, and to drive. Yeah, for biggest thing we're we're I was just talking to our, our in-house uh, HR person and biggest thing is keep your driving record clean. You know, yeah. don't get DUIs and stuff like that because it's really hard to hire somebody, you know, hard to get a job when you you know, you're not really can't have a license. So these truckers that are delivering illegal stuff like, is that on the trucker? Or do you think that that goes up to like your router? Uh, you like, mean like like illegal in, stuff in the? Are you talking about human in beings? The load? Are we talking or, about drugs? You know, like, yeah. So like in Indianapolis, um, what are we talking about? There was a, there was a, allow. Please stop truck hauling nearly three hundred pounds of. Co- Golly. On Indianapolis. Oh gosh. I gotta say that's I gotta say that's on the driver. He knows what you're you gotta not, know you gotta know what's in your wagon. You're not toting three hundred thirteen million dollars worth of coke. And but you don't know three hundred pounds on a you know is an not eighty thousand eighty thousand pound gross vehicle. Yeah. We can go about max forty six in the box. Yeah. 46,000 in the box. No, I get 300 you. pounds of that, you can hide pretty good. But but I, that's still going to come back on the truck driver. Gotcha. Oh, he knows. Oh, that was bad. He knows. <laughs> I shouldn't he make knows. General, generalities like that. But he, knows. he knows. No, they're, he's pushing for the car. Indianapolis, cartel. though, if you look at it, there's so many different, like well, 184 I, Indianapolis pounds. Indianapolis is the crossroads pounds. of America. It really, really is, man. You could argue There's, this. You could argue the same for Kansas City is a real bad on, one too. Get on seventy going from Terre Haute all the way across. Just a mess. It's a mess. Yep. Do something. Do something about that. Non shout out to Indiana. Do <laughs> something about I seventy. It's wild. Dude, I don't know what's going on. Um, I sixty nine going up to Indianapolis is really nice though. Oh yeah. Gone. Once it, now, now that they finally got it's it all almost, tightened it's up, it's almost all the way done. Really? Yeah. Okay. All the way up to right where. Right where it's getting ready to get off onto 465, they got it done all the way up there. It, it is nice. Yeah, because you used to either have to go through Terre Haute or New Albany, and now it's just whoop. yeah, yeah. Drove, or, to, I, or take the back roads and yeah, cut across. Yeah, I but just went up to late last year, sometime up to Bloomington for that project that we did for yep. for uh, Ed. Shout out to that guy. But yeah, it was an easy. Oh, but speaking of going to the bathroom in the truck. Put some put something in between here in Bloomington besides that one gas station at Crane Navy Base, <laughs> right? Please, <laughs> there ain't shit. Out there. there is nothing. Sixty nine not a brutal. thing. Oh my god. Um, no man, but uh, so so we like to do this this one little segment that where we usually generally kind of tie the show up on every time, but um. Uh, during your like truck driving extravaganza that you've been through for the last, you know, coming up on thirty years, 
Um, was there ever a time? 24. 24 years. 24 it's years of driving. Beginning of March this year. So, But yeah. coming up on 30. You're creeping up on well, 30 I years mean, of driving. You need math work, but yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, He was in the infantry. Math's oh, not that, a strong yeah, suit. That, that, not, they don't look for that in I'm not infantry. good at numbers. You get it. Uh, but <laughs> not a mathematician. Uh, I understood there would be no math to, to, quote, to quote Chevy Chase. Yeah, man. Uh, I thought I would just shoot a gun, right? Right. So anyways, uh, no, but, you know, for the better part of, uh, or not the better part, but for two decades plus you've been doing this truck driving stuff, has there ever been a time where... Um, you wanted to hang it up and like just quit truck driving and like and, and quit trucking altogether. And if not, or 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 if so, we care less about the moment because we don't want to like drag you through something terrible. But like more so, what we care about is what kept you on the road, what kept your foot on the gas, literally and you know, metaphorically, uh, what kept you in the game and what kept you going. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the the couple of big things uh one is my faith and just just relying on god uh that's a that's a big thing for me uh the other thing would be my family i've got six kids okay so all right you know when i started when i started driving the the third one was just uh he was very small so Ooh. you know so my kids so my couple of my kids don't even know me outside of being a truck driver and the other ones just barely re- would barely remember it Damn. but just knowing i've got them i'm you know i gotta do this to support them uh when i was when i first started driving i was driving regional and that came to a point where man i hated going i had a great gig i was going four trips from owensboro to chicago a week I'd leave eight o'clock Monday morning. I'd be home by supper on Friday. In the truck driving world, that's a great gig. Yeah, I didn't have to leave on Sunday and not get back home till Saturday. But you're yeah. missing out on all the sporting events, right? But I, yeah, my kids were small moments. enough that they weren't doing that. But I was missing the kids. Right, I was missing my family growing up. So I just hated doing it every day. But you know, I just had. <laughs> Got to provide. You got to do it, and this is what's putting food on the table for them. Uh, but then I moved. It was at that point I moved into being a local driver. Damn. And you know, then I was able to be home every night. That's the saving see, grace. Yeah. Yeah. See their go to their baseball games, do their you know whatever their plays, yeah. all the, all that kind of stuff. I was able to be there for that. It's awesome. But uh, but that's the two really the two things that. That helped me through, you know, the hard times, times of of doing this, and it's it's not easy, and it's not for everybody, but uh, but it is very rewarding. So it's a lot of I have a lot of fun at work. Uh, it's pretty nice to just drive for a living. Like that's that's a pretty. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's an e- Like I say, it's an easy job, but well, like everyone drives for a living, and if you're good yeah, at it, like I mean, it's. It's a little different. There's a there's a lot more to it when you're driving eighty thousand pounds around. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's. I mean, when you're just cruising, it's not, though, it's you know? not rocket surgery. Yeah, you know, but you know, it's, it's got to be a good time. Oh, it's a good time. Yeah, you know, yeah, I get. I see different things all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I may go the same places all yeah. the time, but because I, you know, I only got to set certain amount of places I go. Yeah, but. I always see something different every day. The cool part about that too is just like bicycling. You know, when you you bicycle around town, you know, like when we were training for the triathlon, you just like your traffic report, you almost have a thumb on the city. You get to see what's new in the city, what's oh, yeah. changing in the city, what's with, developing. Right. Yeah. New businesses coming in. Yeah. Hell I'm always yeah. on what I I'm a firm believer in, if you put up a bi- new business somewhere, the first thing you do is put a sign out front that says, this is what's going to be here because everybody wants to know. Oh, yeah. there's. We nothing. don't care who financed it. Yeah, there's nothing. We want to know what it's going to be. There's one on Pearl or uh, University Drive right now. I have no idea what it is by the old Walmart. There's a blank lot that's been excavated and tilled and flattened. Oh, I just, I just there, saw what I, that's going to be. Uh, what is the, that? I saw the bank that financed it. No fucking clue what it is. I, it, I'm sure just, it'll be another Chick-fil-A or something. I just saw an article on... Uh, but on University Drive up against... Uh, Chipotle. It's going to be it's a Chipotle? It's not a Chipotle. Oh, uh, okay. 
Uh, it's not a Chipotle. Chipotle's on the other side of the street. This is the one right over there. You next, know what I'm talking about? Across from McDonald's. The McDonald's. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I but, just saw what that that's a was going to be. That's a good point. There was talk Meyer was coming in there, but it's not Meyer. I don't give a shit about the bank, dude. Just put a sign up and tell me yeah. what the hell it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, no, man, but um, you you do. You're right. I feel like you do have a very rewarding job. I think that I say that it's easy. I know it's not easy, but like when you, what I mean by that is like in the flow when you're just cruising. Like yeah. It's something everyone does all day, every day. So that part has to be like, you don't think so much. I mean, you're watching, right. you're watching your yeah. gauges and watching what you're doing, right? A little more than your average driver, but it's got to be a cool job. And, and from what it, from what we've talked about today, it does sound like you, it is a cool job. You enjoy it. Is it. A, oh, it's a cool job. It's been, it's been very truck driving, but very, very good to me. Uh, good. <laughs> 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 but I will say, uh, I do want you to keep watching the roads, stay in your lane, and you know, yeah. keep everyone around you safe. But also, in your future endeavors, maybe keep your eyes open for some UFOs. UFOs, yeah. Uh, and yeah, if you uh, see something, say something. That's, see something, the, say something. that's the first rule of ufology, okay? Everybody yeah. knows that. I don't know what you got inside of your <laughs> hat there. <laughs> yeah. Probably some tin foil, Can't some tell aluminum you, foil or Can't something. I don't have any in my, inside Can't of mine. Tell you. So. Can't tell you. It's not hair, I promise. Uh, no, man. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Uh, no, but man, um, I, I've had a blast today. You, you could have done anything for the last couple of hours, but you drove on out to the west side, hung out in the Catholic territory, and talked to the day's That's grim. That's okay. For that, we are very, very grateful. No, it's been it's been great. We been, learned a lot been about nothing but great. I I enjoy listening to you guys. And the <laughs> Thank you, dude. Different pe- different people you have on <laughs> there, dude. We've had some some seriously dope people on, and a and wide I'm, variety. I am so thankful for every single one of them that we've had on, and everyone that we're going to have on. So. So, uh, just thank you for taking two hours out of your day, stopping out here on the west side and saying oh, no hello worries. to the day. No worries. It was, a, it was a great time. So, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, this has been another thrilling episode of the Days Grim. My name is Brian Michael Day. My name is Thomas Grimm. And this has been Pete Olson. Thank you thank so you. much, sir. I greatly thank appreciate you. you.